Good evening and thank you for joining us for this special edition of ABC 7. What was supposed to be after the Monday night football game between the Bills and the Bengals. But of course, that game has been suspended for the night. I'm Eric Elkin. Stephanie Valle has the night off and we are in the ABC 7 Alert Center following that breaking news after a Buffalo Bills player collapses on the field during that game against the Cincinnati Bengals happened in the first quarter. That game now suspended for the night. The players, coaches and officials visibly shaken on the field, many of them in tears. The NFL has issued a statement. It reads in part, quote, Damar Hamlin received immediate medical attention on the field by team and medical staff and local paramedics. He was then transported to a local hospital where he is in critical condition. Our thoughts are with Damar and the Buffalo Bills. We will provide more information as it becomes available. The NFL has been in constant communication with the NFL Players Association and is in agreement with postponing the game. And again, this is something that has just been happening within the last couple of hours. That game postponed in the first quarter. We are not going to show you the play in which it happened. We do have ABC 7 Sports Director Adrian Ochoa standing by, though, to break down exactly what's happened. Adrian. Yeah, Eric, just a scary situation that's unfolding in Cincinnati tonight. Of course, our prayers going out to DeMar Hamlin. And here's what we know about Hamlin. We realize some of our viewers aren't sports fans, but Hamlin is just 24 years old now. Hamlin tackled Cincinnati, Cincinnati wide receiver T. Higgins during the game. He got up to his feet and then he fell to the ground shortly after he made that tackle. Now, Hamlin was drafted in the sixth round of the 2021 NFL draft by the Buffalo Bills. Now, after that hit, he was reportedly given CPR on the field before ultimately being driven away in an ambulance where he was reportedly accompanied by his family. During the broadcast, they did mention that his mother was there at the game in Cincinnati. Now, per the NFL statement, Hamlin was transported to a local hospital and is in critical condition. A local media outlet in Cincinnati is actually reporting that Hamlin has been intubated, which means he is on a ventilator, according to that report that was made by a Cincinnati local media affiliate. The delay over at the game lasted well over 50 minutes and saw both clubs depart for their respective locker rooms. Head coaches Sean McDermott and Zach Taylor were seen outside of the locker rooms talking along with various players from both clubs. Not too long after their exchange, word came down from the league that this game was set to be postponed. And uh, of course, uh, Hamlin, a graduate of Pitt, who of course Pitt was just here just last week for the Sun Bowl. Uh, head coach uh, Narduzzi for Pitt sent out a statement on Twitter that I'll show I'll have that for you coming up in sports. But of course, all our prayers going out to DeMar Hamlin tonight. Eric. All right, Adrian, thank you for the latest update. And of course, uh, I'll show you in a moment and as well how Pitt football is honoring DeMar uh, Hamlin and trying to pray for him uh, tonight. But we are joined now by ABC 7's medical contributor, Dr. Ogachika Lozi. Thanks for coming in on a short notice. Adrian mentioned it. A lot of people, of course, may not be sports fans, but this is now a story that has taken over both sport for sports fans and non-sports fans Absolutely. alike. Not going to show the play, but just to kind of bring you up to speed. If you haven't seen it yet, it is all over social media. Uh, it is a scary situation. You have one of the players of the Cincinnati Bengals, T. Higgins, lowering his shoulder as he's carrying the football. Damar Hamlin making the tackle. The point of impact looks like it's shoulder right into his chest. Damar Hamlin stumbles a little bit, gets up. Looks like the play is normal up to that point until all of a sudden he collapses, and then everything happens from there. From your vantage point, everything you saw, take me through what is going through your mind from a medical professional background. Yes, yeah, so I'd be a couple of things. I think first of all, our thoughts and prayers are with his family, right? And we really, it's such a shocking event as somebody that watches football, I had a football lover. Um, that's a routine play. It happens yeah. probably a hundred times in every game. But I was at home with my son, with family, watching the game, and when he went down, saw him fall, and just initially thought, well, uh, concussion, right? Tua for the Miami Dolphins, a lot of that has happened, but then it didn't look right. And so for me, it turned to my sister-in-law, who's also a physician, I said, hey, you gotta look at this, something's wrong. He's, I think he may be having a heart condition. As we've later learned, he had an AED, which is an automatic elect electrical defibrillator, which actually shocks the heart, which makes a decision on whether the heart has the right rhythm. And so that went on for eight to 10 minutes. And so by the time he left, as they said, he was intubated, tube down his throat to provide oxygen. He wasn't able to breathe on his own. His pulse had returned. He's in critical condition. And I think it's just one of those shocking things. You don't expect to see that in a football game. Many of us have been watching football, all of us have been watching football for years and have never seen anything like that on TV, live TV. I think the NFL did the right thing by postponing this game. And as a physician, again, I'm an infectious disease physician, but as an internal medicine doctor, understand this, he probably, possibly, we don't want to speculate, had something called a commotio cordis, 
which is actually a thump to the heart, and that can actually stop the heart. And so when it stops the heart, thankfully, if there's any place that he wanted to be to get that kind of care, it's probably in an NFL stadium or an NBA stadium, a professional sports facility that has people that are certified in advanced cardio cardiac life support that can get him back. And I think that's critical. I started my career covering sports, and one of the first things you're told Never speculate on injuries. Absolutely. And that's why I want to be very careful in what we're doing, but this is an important discussion to have based Absolutely. on what everybody has seen out there and what everybody's talking about uh, right now. You mentioned it. These types of collisions seemingly happen all the time in football, usually when it's of a, this type of severity where you see stretcher ambulance on the field. It's a head and neck thing that you're looking Absolutely. at, an injury that you're looking at. But in this case, it, it did, not, did not look like in the, in the play itself that there was immediate contact to the head. Yeah. It was shoulder into chest. There's this kind of hard contact, very big, fast, strong players going at very high rates high of speed, speed head-on collisions. What, how can this one be seemingly so different? You know, it's one of those things. We're so attuned to talk about concussions in the NFL, and so that's what we focus on. But I think, unfortunately, sometimes it's bad luck. It's the timing. He may have received a hit at the wrong time in his heart cycle. It's an electrical cycle, and that may have stopped his heart again. Not to speculate, sure. but that seems to be what may have happened. And again, I think what we really need to focus on is obviously those thoughts and prayers. He was in the right place, essentially, at the right time with trained medical professionals that could get to him immediately, take care of him, get him to a hospital, a level one trauma center, University of Cincinnati, that has some of the best professionals there. I think some of the calls and texts I've gotten from people already are, well, if this was to happen in El Paso, or what if this has happened at the Sun Bowl, where would they have gone, right? And I think, again, we are in a community that's blessed by a host of facilities, whether it's the hospitals of Providence, Sierra Campus, Las Palmas del Sol Medical Center, or the University, of Medi University Medical Center, El Paso, right? They are all equipped to take people in like this. And so I think one of the other things, too, people say, well, what can I do to prevent this? It's kind of too early to have that conversation. The only thing I would say is if you have a young child that's playing sports, make sure they get their pre-sports physical, right? There are a host of cardiac conditions that especially male athletes can have that can be screened for to protect them and prevent them from ever playing a game if they have that condition. And so really, again, thoughts and prayers with the family. Um, we really hope that he pulls through this. I think he has age on his side, and so that may be a saving grace, but again, let's we'll see what happens. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you too. Obviously, you're not privy to all of his medical information, uh, but 24 years old, an NFL athlete you mentioned I, I imagine timing is so important in this too in terms of a, a fast response which you have touched on already in terms of being on an NFL football field with an ambulance right there Absolutely. University of Cincinnati level one trauma center a few minutes right away. around the corner Absolutely. yeah I've used to cover the Bengals myself yeah. so I've spent many of uh, many games there covering games there and I understand that the geography there a little bit but in terms of what happens from here for someone who's 24 years old, an NFL athlete, what is the possibility of, of what could happen next? Because everyone's fear has gone to the, the worst and darkest place, and understandably so, Absolutely. given what we've seen. Absolutely. So I think a couple of things, right? Again, there's multiple pathways that can go from this. He's in the right place. I think that's critical. He's in an ICU with intensivists. Cardiologists will come in and make an assessment. From the reports we're hearing, he does have a pulse back, right? So I think that's key. The second question then becomes oxygen, right? Is he getting enough oxygen? Was he down long enough before he got oxygen that he may have what's called anoxic brain injury? We don't know. Way too early sure. to tell. Usually that first 24 hours in any critical care situation is the key. And so we will get more information over the next 24 hours. Again, I think the fact that he is a world-class athlete playing a professional sport hopefully will help him. Hopefully he can recover from this. And hopefully he was not down too long before he was able to get that oxygen, the life-saving CPR that will get him back in the future. And that was what was happening right Absolutely. away in that huddle. T Absolutely. Take us through what, what yeah. I mean, the importance of getting that oxygen. Yeah, and so you could tell really quickly when they cut back from commercial break, and like I said, that's when I turned to my sister-in-law, the look of the players. And right? the tears. Yeah. Well, that type of crying from that many no, players. That's, that's, that's not what happens yeah. from a head injury, right? We see these often. Again, the players kneel and everything, but the absolute look of shock and distress, whether it was from the quarterback, whether from Stephon Diggs, players mm -hmm. crying on the field. Again, the process of 
applying CPR to somebody. People understand that if you're doing CPR, that's a life-threatening event, sure. could potentially die. The fact that he had to be intubated, right, to get an airway to protect his airway so that he could breathe since he wasn't breathing on his own. And so watching that, once you came back and the crowd around him, the cameras being pushed away, I think, again, not to talk about TV per se, but I think the TV crew did an immense job of continually cutting away from that situation so that the cameras weren't trying to get in and look at that. But again, what you see is trained professionals who probably have ACLS, that advanced cardiac life support training, able to get to him, apply CPR, get that AED on him, make a decision to shock or not to shock, a host of other IV medications that they may have needed to give him to restart his heart, to trigger his heart, and then get that airway, right? It's airway breathing circulation. And so I think those are the critical keys. He got those things. And so again, we just need to really wait and see what happens next. I think from a, a medical standpoint, I mean, we're, we're all as fans watching, I was watching it live with my family as well, we all kind of go into this state of shock, seeing what's going on and trying to process what's happening. And you start to, as the minutes go by, you realize the magnitude and the severity Absolutely. of this is only increasing. But you've also got the medical background. So between the medical background and, and what you saw right away initially, because it sounds like right away you could sense that something was really not okay in this situation yeah. versus the fan shock side of it. How were you kind of observing this? Oh, I think it's a combo, right? I'm watching the game as a fan primarily, but then as things are evolving, you get that sense of shock and horror and then start to overanalyze the process. Sure. Like, well, what's happening? Why is this taking so long? And as I turned to my son, he's 12 and was with me, I said, you know, the reality is that nobody's on the field for that long with an ambulance if things are okay. Right, something's, on, something's wrong, he's probably getting CPR, he's probably needing to be shocked. And so those are the things that were going through my head. And, and this sort of sense of doom and really getting the, the chills and the goosebumps almost moved to tears because it's just that shock of something that you've never seen on TV, right? And so it's that hybrid feeling of, yes, I'm watching it as an NFL football fan, but then also watching it as a physician and knowing that this is not good and he's in a very critical condition and they need to figure out what they're going to do next to get him to a hospital. And so in a sense, I was relieved when the ambulance finally left the field, but knowing that that's just the first part of that journey. Right, and it's a long journey ahead, it I is, would imagine. Maybe. Those tears we saw evident on the field, Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, several other players, of course, there's the shock on their face if they weren't actually crying. You could see the shock in their face. I'm sure many of you watching at home uh, felt and experienced the same thing. And, and now it's, uh, for many people, a wait and see game yeah. and uh, see what happens. And, and of course, the continued thoughts and prayers. Dr. Oguchi Galozzi, thank you so much for your uh, medical expertise on this matter, our ABC7 medical contributor. But the reactions are just pouring in. I want to take you out uh, to some of the reactions that have been coming in uh, throughout the night. I mentioned that I would be showing you the uh, Buffalo Bills uh, Twitter page here first. I want to show it to you because sometimes it's an image that is really worth a thousand words is the cliche, but it is so powerful. And this is the image that is pinned to the top of the Buffalo Bills Twitter page saying the thoughts and prayers of all Bills Mafia are supporting you, Damar. And you can see here on the field, and this is moments after it had happened, you can still see how full the stands are there at Paycor Stadium, uh, formerly Paul Brown Stadium there in Cincinnati, and the whole team getting around, huddling a moment in prayer. And I believe this is right when they were uh, driving the ambulance off of the field. So it was uh, many minutes after the actual injury and event took place on the field. But you can see the entire team all down, heads bowed in prayer. Uh, this on the Buffalo Bills. I mentioned also he is a former Pitt player. Of course, Pitt just playing here in the Sun Bowl on Friday. So uh, very familiar with the borderland here, of course. Uh, Pitt football has changed its banner uh, to a picture of Damar Hamlin. And you can see here, they say, Damar Hamlin is the best of us. We love you three, uh, praying for you. They, of course, also retweeted this picture from the Buffalo Bills. And throughout the night, you can see this was kind of a wait and see uh, situation uh, where people were just hanging on with bated breath to see what was ultimately uh, going to happen uh, with uh, Damar Hamlin and, of course, everyone uh, fearing the worst, hoping for the best. I can show you uh, some of the other um, th Actually, before I show you uh, some of the other reactions, this is another thing I wanted to bring to your attention. Uh, this is something that you've probably seen if you've been scrolling through social media now. Uh, this was actually a toy drive that Damar Hamlin had set up 
uh, just within the last couple of weeks uh, for through his foundation, the Chasing M's Foundation Community Toy Drive, uh, trying to raise money. And even uh, this is Damar Hamlin who is organizing this fun fundraiser, just a GoFundMe like so many uh, of you have done out there. And he says, as I embark on my journey to the NFL, I will never forget where I come from and I am committed to using my platform to positively impact the community that raised me. I created the Chasing M's Foundation as a vehicle that will allow me to deliver that, the, that impact. And the first program is the 2020 Community Toy Drive. And, and take a look at the donations uh, over and actually I'm going to refresh this real quick. Uh, that's why because there are 200,000 plus more dollars since uh, just a few minutes ago uh, when I last pulled this up and uh, I was talking to Dr. Losey about this actually uh, before we came on the air and he was telling me that there were actually uh, some reports here that uh, the GoFundMe was no longer able to even accept some of the money because the donations started pouring in uh, so quickly. You can see even just Fan of DeMar just within the last uh, $5,000 and these, uh, fa these uh, donations are coming in uh, from all over the place. And this foundation, by the way, the Toy Drive, this is DeMar Hamlin's uh, Instagram page. This is video of that Toy Drive. This is DeMar Hamlin uh, just recently, just from a couple of days ago, third annual Toy Drive that he's hosting, having a good time. You can see it here. Look at the kids he's impacting, bringing them toys uh, for Christmas, allowing uh, people to have the joy, the celebration of the season, of the moment, signing autographs. Uh, this is a guy that by all accounts, uh, from the Bills organization, from Pitt football, you see it here. It reminds you a lot of like a guy like Aaron Jones, who is so giving back to his community and connects so well uh, with, with the youngsters. And speaking of Aaron Jones, he has uh, also tweeted about this as well. Of course, uh, retweeting this, uh, Robert Griffin III, uh, former uh, Baylor quarterback, Washington uh, quarterback as well, retweeting this photo. This was the one that the Bills put out there saying, don't share the video of DeMar Hamlin play. Share this because we're all praying for him and his family. That was a retweet from Aaron Jones. And Aaron Jones, about an hour ago, uh, putting up uh, the prayer signs as well. Also, Patrick Mahomes praying hard. Please be okay, man. J.J. Watt had some powerful tweets, of course, as well, who, by the way, he had a heart condition earlier and a heart scare earlier in the year, so I can only imagine what he's thinking as all of this is happening as well. Please be okay, man. Please be okay. That was in the game as, as it was all unfolding. Then an hour later, the game is not important. DeMar Hamlin's life is important. Please be okay. Please. And that was when there was a lot of uncertainty as to whether or not they would try and resume the game tonight. There was a long delay before the announcement ultimately to uh, postpone the game, uh, suspend the game. We still don't have word yet. And there's him with uh, Kenny Pickett. They, of course, former teammates at Pitt. Now the Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback. So this is some, from, from some file video uh, that we're seeing uh, of DeMar Hamlin. But again, this is something that uh, we'll have to see how it plays out from a football standpoint. But that is the furthest thing from everyone's mind in terms of when the Bengals and Steelers ultimately resume this game, how that plays out. Of course, this is at a very important time in the season. But right now, all eyes and uh, ears are on DeMar Hamlin's situation. I do want to take it uh, on to um, some of the reactions uh, from the reporters there locally. There are some really powerful things happening in Cincinnati right now. As you can see here, uh, this is from one of the local TV reporters there. This is, these are Cincinnati Bengals fans who were at the game and have made their way to University of Cincinnati's hospital to pray for DeMar Hamlin. So fans of the game, not even of the Buffalo Bills, just fans of the game who were at the game who witnessed, presumably, if, if they were in attendance of the game itself. There are obviously probably people who weren't even in attendance of the game who are making their way out there. But these are Cincinnati Bengals fans who are making their way to the hospital to be out there to join in prayer uh, for DeMar Hamlin. I want to make sure I don't scroll through and show anything uh, of the play itself. But uh, this is another video that uh, was shared on his YouTube page. More of that toy drive, that giving uh, spirit, this Chasing M's Foundation that is now upwards of close to a million dollars on that GoFundMe page in terms of those donations. And this is something now that is being widely shared to really speak to uh, who he is as a person. This is another TV reporter there locally saying, uh, this is a quote from uh, fans at UC Medical Center there, uh, again, all wearing Bengals stuff, and they're being interviewed by the local media there. Just because we're Bengals fans doesn't mean we aren't fans of him. Nobody wants to experience something like this. That was horrific. We support you, Bills. Cincinnati supports you. There is a lot still to happen. We are following everything. We will continue to follow everything, but we need to step aside, take a break. We'll be right back.